let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into this right quick. Now, this is a good story. I'm not going to get fired up about this one. I'll get, I'll get fired up in a good way. How's that? Yeah. There um, you go. It's your boy. Steve Forbes, East Tennessee State head coach, is the new head coach at Wake Forest University. Now, we have not discussed this on the show yet. It happened over the weekend. We had more stuff to talk about on Monday than, uh, than we planned. But Danny Manning was fired on Saturday of all times, and he was owed $15 million. Now, it, the insiders, you know, Matt Norlander, Gary Paris, the guys over at CBS Sports and whatnot, have heard from the people involved with Wake Forest. They think they're only going to have to pay maybe half of that contract. The, the whole thing, if they were to pay the entire buyout, would be over $15 million. The people inside at Wake Forest are telling them, we may have to pay even less than half of what that actually is. So when you go down and look at the contract, if they're going to have to only pay half or less than half. That means they've got something that's a big negotiating tool. Yeah, and now now they did go to Manning initially and tell him, from what I understand, not don't misquote me, obviously, but uh, but they went to him and said, hey, let's settle this. We're going to fire you. We're going to give you six million dollars. And he said, no, you owe me fifteen. And they said, I'm not taking it either. They said, look, uh. We're going, like, you're going to have to fire, or not fire, you're going to have to hire attorneys and <laughs> fight us attorneys in court. Attorneys are expensive. They don't cost $10 million. Exactly. But it's, okay, what are you going to do? Pay $200,000 to attorneys? And yep. and yep. you're going to fight for $9 million? Yeah, for I would do the same thing. Yeah, um, anybody in the world would fight for $9 million if it cost them a couple hundred grand. Yeah. And that's, so that's a that's ROI return yes, on investment. Hundred percent, pretty good. It's pretty yeah, it's, good. it's not bad. And even if you get it cut in half, nine million down to four and a half, you spent two hundred thousand dollars to get four and a half million. Bam. That's not bad. <laughs> that's not bad at all. So I, I can understand where he's coming from. I totally get it. Uh, but Danny Manning is out, and obviously this is five days later than it actually happened. But they've already got their guy. It is Thursday. And they have hired Steve Forbes, who I think is a brilliant hire. He, in four seasons, he got two automatic bids. He won 130 games. 130 games. That is absurd. So, he's fantastic. I mean, he's unbelievable. He had two seasons at a North Florida Juco. Now, I, I want to tell you Forbes' story. For those of you that don't know what's going on with Steve Forbes, he was an assistant at Tennessee under Bruce Pearl. He lost his job when Bruce Pearl lied to the NCAA and they caught him in the lie about the whole Aaron Kraft recruiting visit for the, the barbecue at his house. It would have been a minor secondary violation had he not lied about it. But when you lie to the NCAA, they make an example out of you. It got Bruce Pearl. Because you got, you got to be honest with them. You got it. So it got Bruce Pearl a three-year show cause. It got... Forbes and the rest of the guys on his staff, a two-year show cause, through no fault of their own. Everybody involved in that coaching staff got a show cause because of Bruce Pearl. The guy's a piece of trash. But anyway, I, I still like him. I still like him. But that whole thing the was NCAA, ridiculous. The NCAA is the one that's wrong in this. I, I'm with you. You can hate Tennessee. You can hate Auburn. You no, can hate I'm not, Bruce. All you I want. I don't hate Auburn. I don't you, hate Tennessee. The, I, the NCAA is 100% wrong in this case. I'm with you. But should they, they have to lie about a barbecue? Really? No, they shouldn't. But that's really? the thing. They didn't have to to begin with. But then it didn't matter. Yes, they did. It would have still been an infraction had they not lied. A, a, a secondary. They I told, mean, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. <laughs> Why is it a minor infraction? Why is it anything? The dude came over for a damn barbecue. Yeah, I, now that, I, the rules are stupid. But the rules so are the there. rules. So, you know, it is what it is. Either way. That, that whole thing, the fact that Bruce Pearl himself lying got these three assistant coaches, uh, Tony and, and Steve Forbes. And but I'm what, sure they all lied. At some point in time, they all got called. They didn't just ask Bruce. I, I'm, yeah, you know what? They may not have known the answer, and they may have just lied to save Bruce. And, you know, or Bruce told them, hey, this is, this is what happened. So then they all lie, in which case the NCAA, either way. Long story short, let's get back to what actually happened. He gets fired from Tennessee along with Bruce Pearl's entire staff. He has a show cause. He can't coach in the NCAA. He 
he is at the point where he thinks he's going to lose it. I mean, because assistant coaches at that point were only yeah. making, you know, $150,000. I mean, Bruce Pearl's not- making $3 million. The assistant coach is making like 150000 Well, is- then Bruce Pearl immediately gets a job on TV after that. So mm. and while Forbes he's sitting now, ESPN is going to start paying him. Yeah, so he's, Bruce Pearl is fine. He's got a nest egg. He, he got paid uh, part of a buyout yeah. for this whole thing. I mean, it, Tennessee— Head coaches get everything. We never think about what the assistants get. So they were at a point where they were worried that they were going to end up losing their house. I mean, that, that's, how, that's how dire the situation got. And it was, it was only two years, but it's still like, good gracious, right? Uh, so, so he's trying to find a job. He gets a job as a JUCO head coach down in Florida. So, and it's North Florida Junior Cup, whatever it is, right? And he wins two state championships down there and works his way back up and gets an assistant coach's job at Wichita State under uh, Greg Marshall and absolutely knocks it out of the park. He's recruiting like gangbusters to Wichita State, who, I mean, that was, that was, he was an assistant when Wichita State went undefeated for the entire regular season back a few right. years ago. He leaves there, gets the head coaching job at East Tennessee State, and leads them to maybe the most successful tenure of any coach in East Tennessee State history. I mean, he's unbelievable. And now he is an ACC head coach going head-to-head with Roy Williams, Mike Krzyzewski, um, all of these guys in the ACC. Yeah. And it is an absolute feel-good story. He is a monster head coach, and he is going to do good things at Wake Forest. I guarantee it, and God bless America. I hope he's coaching one of my teams eventually. I wanted Memphis to hire him. If, if the Penny Hardaway thing didn't work out, I wanted Memphis to get him. I wanted Alabama to get him last year. I want somebody that I pull for to get this guy because he is going to kill it on the recruiting trail. He is going to kill it at at. Coaching the actual team, he's going to kill the press guy. Look, his introductory press conference at East Tennessee State, this guy said, look, I was working at McDonald's when I was 21 years old. A decade later, I was recruiting McDonald's All-Americans. He said, now I'm at East Tennessee State. He said, I am used to recruiting Burger King All-Americans that hate McDonald's and want to kick their ass. That's what I love about this guy. He is fan- He's a fantastic quote. He's a fantastic coach. He's a fantastic recruiter. Everything about this guy is awesome. I hope him, uh, I wish him nothing but the best. I think he's going to kill it at Wake Forest. The guy's only 50 years old, Chris. He's only 50. Think about yeah. the other coaches in the ACC. Wake Forest is ahead of the curve here. Like, they they got a monster recruiter and a monster head coach. He's only 50. You got Krzyzewski that's in his mid to late 70s. You got Roy Williams, who is, you know, getting older. Mike Bray at Notre Dame getting older on his way out more than likely. I mean, you got all these guys at these other places that are not young. All these big-time schools are going to be going through coaching changes. They're going to be going through legendary coaching changes. Jim Beheim, all these Jim Laranega at Miami. They're all going to be moving on eventually. So by 2023, 2024, somewhere around there, I mean, you, you got Forbes in there. For four years or whatever, building up this program, I think this is a fantastic move by Wake Forest. Now, obviously, we don't talk a whole lot of Wake Forest basketball or football or anything on here, but I guarantee you we're going to start because I love this guy. I think this was a fantastic hire. No, I'm, I'm, with I'm with you. I took I'm all the you. air out of the room with that. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, f- I feel passionately about this one, man. He is like he's a guy I've been pulling for for a long, long time. Um, I thought he was done dirty, and and he has worked his way back up from nothing, man. Nothing. It's awesome to see. I uh, I think he's going to be insanely successful. So, uh, we. Can-